What's up, guys? Welcome back to the S3 Magazine podcast. Once again, we have made it. Now it will be three weeks in a row. Can we just get a little a little <laughs> applause for that? We're I'm rolling. proud of us. Yeah. That's where we jinx oh, and we're just going to tank these next two weeks. <laughs> we, we've got uh, some. We've got, dude. This past week has been crazy in the automotive world. I mean, we've got some updates on COVID. A lot of automotive companies pitching in to live, lend a hand. Um, we've got a uh, Gimbala Mirage GT rampage through downtown Manhattan. Um, NASCAR is just a crap show. Coming it, off the rails, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Dude, it's going to be an intro, so stay tuned. Okay, so I just want to start off by saying, if you are watching the video portion of this podcast, um, you can see behind me, my Focus ST is back together after a month of being in pieces. I, I was... So if you don't know, I was currently, or I had been doing a big turbo upgrade, a Garrett 2867 Gen 2 um, upgrade on it, and it just was not going the way that I wanted it to go. Par the course of trying to modify your car in a big way like that, but I got it wrapped up. Everything's good. Brian Tyson from JST Performance, because of the whole quarantine thing, I can't go to a shop. We are currently e-tuning it, um, hoping for... Upper upper 300 wheel horsepower range, but it should be a lot of fun. But let's go ahead and dive into our conversation today. How are you guys doing? How's the past week been for boring. you guys? Yeah, super quiet, slow, yeah. boring. We had that hurricane COVID last night. I watched Netflix. Oh, yeah. Like, all of it. <laughs> Ozark, Money <laughs> uh, <laughs> Heist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys are just a a bundle of fun. But uh, while while you guys are sitting being unproductive, a lot of auto auto manufacturers have been really been pitching in a hand and trying to help out with um, COVID efforts. Um, so like Hyundai, Hyundai, however you want to say it, um, they recently just donated a hundred thousand dollars plus ten thousand COVID test kits. Uh, to the city of Detroit. I don't specifically know why Detroit, um, but they I did just, that. Uh, Help. Rub it in Ford and Chevy and Dodge's nose. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it, it sounds is. more like a PR because it's not a, it's not a lot of money. But it sounds more like a PR stuff than anything else. Yeah, but who knows? How, it, where's for, do we know where Hyundai's headquarters is? I don't know where they are. Korea. Korea? But I don't know where the headquarters is. Maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Dude, like Alabama. Yeah, I think they've got a big manufacturer <laughs> in Alabama. That's not their headquarters. Think, they make a lot of cars in Alabama. Uh, yeah, they make some cars over there in West <laughs> Georgia or mm-hmm. Southwest Georgia or more south. But, um, yeah, I know they got some plants in, in our area. But anyways, they've been doing a lot of effort. Um, Tesla has also started making, you know, last week we uh, talked about the Model 3 being the top six ranking car in the U.S. Well, now Tesla has since started making ventilators out of Model 3 parts. Um, So go Elon, go Tesla for putting in their piece. Um, But spawning off of the whole COVID talk, you know, everybody's been kind of, uh, the roads have been empty, statewide shutdowns, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that leads us into everybody knows the cannonball run. If you don't know the cannonball run, it's basically this, you know, official, not so official sprint race from Manhattan to Los Angeles and to see who can do it in the fastest time. You know, if you're not familiar with it, you should be. Go look it up. There's tons of videos. I think they even made a documentary about it. It's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. But there was a group of guys that have officially, unofficially, decided to take it on themselves to take advantage of of the roads being empty currently. So they took last, a... What's last that? time I checked, they had not revealed the identity of the guys who did it, right? Yeah, no. The, uh, the identity... The, uh, there was a photo that was posted of the car, yep. um, but it has since been deleted. 
due to, you know, the legality of it all. And there's a lot of things that you want to be sure that you're not exposing before you announce this. Um, but it is. Well, isn't the whole, like, isn't the whole idea about the, the, the run just illegal in the first place? Like most yeah, people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Itself. So like, why do we, <clears throat> why are we thinking about that now? Like, let's face it. Like I know the, I know the streets are empty and you're probably going to get a better time because there's not as much traffic out there, but. I mean, to let I, you know because... how illegal it was, I, I found the website that actually ran the numbers on this. Okay, so they did it in what? 26, 26. hours and 38 minutes. First of all, think about that. What the hell? <laughs> New York to Redondo Beach and in, basically just over, in just over one day. The shortest possible route, according to Google Maps, in order to hit that time, you would have to average 103 miles an hour. Okay, now that includes stopping for gas. Nope, they got Ass lost in the it. trunk. Yeah, but they still had to stop at some point. They didn't have enough to go coast to okay. coast. I don't know. Hold about on a second. So speak, speaking of you saying that they had extra fuel tanks in the trunk, I did see the leaked photo of the vehicle. The car that they did it in was an Audi A8L that had two marine, like we're talking boat, two marine fuel tanks ratchet strapped in the trunk of it. Yeah, like, it's a fireball waiting to happen. But yeah, yeah Mike's right. They did it in 26, 26 hours, 38 minutes, which is 45 minutes faster than the previous record that had been set um, last year. And th yeah, that's just crazy. Like November. It feels like it just happened. Yeah. Yeah, like it was six months ago see, easily. Here's the thing I don't understand. I, I think it was Jalopnik, maybe that go mm -hmm. figure. But they were trying to like reprimand these people for doing it during covid yeah this is an outlaw highly illegal game with no rules yeah it's the safest possible time to ever do right. it. exactly exactly I mean, like how are we gonna get up on a pedestal and shame these guys for doing something that is illegal to begin with anyway yeah it, yeah, it, I'm hearing they're not going to like uh, take that time seriously or accept that well, time then, as a record. To hell with the whole thing, then, because right. that's the record. What? Okay, so yeah. next they're going to say he was speeding. <laughs> it's ridiculous. He cheated like, at extra gas. The boys saw an opportunity and took it. We were all well, talking I guess, about it before it happened. We knew somebody was going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's been a major talk, and I think that that's kind of that's kind of the reason you know uh, as unsafe as it was there was like marine fuel tanks ratchet strapped in the back of it because they saw an opportunity and they probably had a broken boat laying around in the backyard and they go you got anything to do tomorrow no i was laid <laughs> off you know screw it <laughs> yeah I don't, that's right. a lot of people got time in their hands this is the time to do it i was yeah. um i, I want to say it was jalopnik and don't quote me on that but i know they had a hand in there somewhere on what i was reading but um yeah they were like you know, and they're putting potential people in danger at the risk of having to go to the hospital or during COVID. And what if they had mechanical failure and then a guy with a wrecker has got to be exposed to him? I'm like, seriously, like this is Sounds what, like what y'all are going after about a cannonballer. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I agree with Mike. They're doing it when the streets are empty. They've lowered the, the, yeah. the risk and maximized the odds. Like, I'm, I'm not... I mean, yeah, I mean, traffic's got to be down at least 50 percent. That's millions of people off of the road that could potentially get into a massive accident with this thing. So, yeah, I would say, yeah, there's other terrible stuff that could have happened. But as far as just straight up safety, this was the safest possible way to do it. I hand it to him, but it's just going to be tough to come up behind that. I mean, when all this blows over, it's going to be hella difficult oh yeah that oh that oh, was yeah. gonna hold they're for gonna, a while yeah 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 they're gonna hold that up. they're gonna hold that although yeah. i mean still under quarantine you guys wanna <laughs> you guys wanna give it a go <laughs> hey <laughs> still yes, time. Right. let's put that let's put that new turbo to test man yeah oh my god yeah we'll just load up in the st tomorrow come on guys no, nah, I'll man. be in my caliber. I am comfy far, caliber. far too prissy to do that in 26 <laughs> hours. I'm gonna be like, I what? have to say, what's that? I, I, I mean, I guess they're just peeing in the car, huh? Just going for it. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Right. I'm sure they got plenty of bottles. I mean, I, I know I'm, it's not. I know it's not. You can't. I guess relate the two, but we did Atlanta to Texas in uh, an evening, a day. Like, Was it a day? I mean, I, I mean, we weren't that. Listen, if we were planning to I, leave early, I know. You know, eventually we had to we had to be late to something. I like the 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 spirit of it. I mean, speed is only one small part to win in that thing. You know, you got to plan it all. Yeah, it gets and, and, yeah. fast though. What's that? It gets dangerous fast. You remember the one that we did that that one for charity that we did well, like ten years ago? I can tell you, you get sucked into it fast. <laughs> like yeah. you're like, all right, I'm not going to be one of them jerks though. That oh, you know, and, you're like, it's <laughs> and then you end up being one of the those max. jerks. Oh yeah, dude, we got oh, pulled gosh. out of the car. We got keys thrown on the on the hood. Told we, you know, we were going to jail. And then he kind of just like, all right, I think we scared him enough, so he let us up. But he pulled everybody. I, think I mean, there was like just too were, many of us. Where were they going to put us? Yeah, they, he was just standing there in the middle of the road, and anybody that had a modified car, uh, he was pulling over. Oh. Yeah. Do you, do you remember? That was for charity, so it was okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no one got hurt. It was fine. If they did this to help make ventilators, nobody would bat an eye. Yeah. Be on. Get yeah. a freaking award. That's where they screwed up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What's the next topic? So, kind of bouncing off of the whole, um, the whole Manhattan to Los Angeles run, and you know the wild car doing wild things. There was a guy. His name is Ben Chen, out of Manhattan. If you've never heard of Ben Chen, let me see. Uh, let me make sure I got this right. He is a co-founder of the Gold Rush Rally. It's a, another rally for you know supercar owners. But he owns a one of twenty-five. It's number twenty-three of twenty-five. Gimbala Mirage GT, which is a factory modified uh, Porsche Carrera GT. Um, so he took it on himself to mm. take advantage of the streets being. A little more empty in downtown Manhattan as of recently. Decided to go on a little bit of a joy ride, right? You know, par the course, get your seven hundred fifty thousand dollar car out, have a little fun in it. However, on drugs. He yeah, he did. <laughs> Even with traffic down, he definitely found some cars to hit for sure. <laughs> he did. He had he a Mustang mentality. <laughs> he didn't compensate for the power that the car made and ended up slamming in the back of not one but a couple minivans and taxis and whatnot. <laughs> But Ben decided to leave the scene. And if you watch the video, we can't play the video for you here. But if you go look up the video, you can see you just hear this like supercar V10 screaming with the passenger side wheel tucked up under the front end of him just trying to escape the cops. Of course, they caught him. And he has since been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said it like that he's video been of that <laughs> Did you guys see the video of the first Sienna that he hit? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, oh, he, dude, he destroyed, destroyed the it. crap out of that thing. I mean, it was in the park. <laughs> the brake might have been on. Didn't matter. That thing shot off like a missile when he hit. It. Yeah, it sounds kind of like a combo of Wolf of Wall Street and like Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did not see the video, but it sounds like it somebody's hilarious. gone snap. Well, it was really dangerous. So, <laughs> so this guy, he's apparently pretty notorious for basically destroying things. So it says that some of the articles that I was was reading say Gold Rush Rally is also like um, has been under the uh, like been under the microscope for a lot of uh, financial, um, you know, stuff. <laughs> A bunch of different things. It says that Ben Chen also destroyed a McLaren 12C during one of the rallies and also hit a Mercedes AMG CLK GTR at one point. So this dude um, seems to be just kind of a train wreck all the way around. But dude, I, one thing that I thought flags, it was flags, man. Just one after <laughs> yeah. the other. How, I mean, I guess after an amount of money, you're like, all right, yeah, we'll sell it to this guy. But as a manufacturer, if you look at your driver, and this is the the the, the history this guy has, I wouldn't want to sell him that vehicle. Well, yeah. no, okay, so this is a, a, a number 23 of 25 Gimbala Mirage GT, right? But it says that this specific one, he was built for him. And I even have a quote from him here 
of th this is wh what the quote says. It says, this is probably my favorite part of the buying experience of a car, the spec and the design process. I am extremely particular down to every nut and bolt detail. Nothing on any one of my cars, both in and out, was not carefully thought about. I always have a very clear vision of how I want my cars to look. <laughs> I knew exactly what my Gimbala was. Crumpled up into the back of a skin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this dude, he's a character, man. He's like for sure a character. Oh my gosh. I'm just looking at it like that positive candor back to the future wheel flop on the front end. <laughs> gosh. That, that and that's just ridiculous. Terrible. Okay, so there's a part of this that's like, I mean, we're talking about the same situation that happened with the with the gumball run or whatever. Uh, they basically did the same thing. They took the opportunity of clear roads to drive, and one was searching after a record, the other was just searching out for you know a good time. And I let's mean, face it, most of us do that anyways. I did it, not to that extent, but yeah. I was talking to Hunter the other day, and I was like, dude. I finally just got out and drove, which I've been taking the quarantine thing pretty darn seriously. And so I finally got out the other day and was just driving, you know, back roads. And it was like therapy. You know what I mean? Like it felt so it felt so good. It felt better than it normally does because, it, you know, it had been a while. And uh, yeah, my mentality went to like, all right, I'm just going to haul ass. Now, I wasn't going like cannonball fast, but I was figuring... Yeah, I'll do about 20 over the speed limit everywhere I go. 25 if I get pulled over. I've been saving a lot of money this month not going anywhere. <laughs> that was literally my thought process was, you know, I bet you the police probably don't want to mess with you if you're not, like, really committing crimes. You know what I mean? If I was a cop right now, I'd be like, hell, dude, I ain't going to mess with him for 25 over. You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll, I'll let this one slide or whatever, um, and I'll save my you know, having to like get involved with people unless it's accidents or robberies or, or, or real crimes. But I was like, you know, if I get pulled over, I'll just apologize, tell them it got away from me. And I just kind of, you know, we're all I having know. a little... <laughs> I couldn't do that. <laughs> like, sir, it just got away from me. It does that. So um, today, speaking of getting pulled over, I, I want to input this really fast. Yeah. So I, I had to do my first wide open throttle pulls in, in the focus today. So I did the first the first pull and immediately broke something like right out of the gate. <laughs> and yeah, or so I thought. It ended up just being the brake dust shield fell into the rotor, <clears throat> but it made a god awful noise and I was like, it's done. Like I'm screwed. It's a very so, humbling feeling though. I, I did the pull. I was actually on FaceTime with Jesse when that <laughs> happened. But um I uh I pulled into a gas station. I did the pull on the interstate, and then I pulled off into the in this gas station parking lot. And I'm like underneath the car, trying to check stuff, and like in my mindset, I'm just messing with stuff. And then I turn around, and right beside me is a cop sitting with his window down, and he's he's just looking at me, and like we make eye contact, and he goes, "What you doing?" <laughs> no, I go, you were gonna get pulled just, over. Just <laughs> taking my mom some chicken noodle soup. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, I go, oh, just working on my car. And he goes, What you working on? And I go, you know, I I put uh I just put a, a new turbo on and you know I'm trying to get everything sorted and, and get the you know the parameters set right. And he's like and then he kind of grins and he goes, how many pounds of boost? And I go, well, according to some guys on similar setups, it should be pushing a, around 30-ish pounds of boost. So I've been told. And he goes, hmm, nice. <laughs> y'all good? He's he like, goes, I'll see you yeah. around, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he goes, he goes well, you all good? And I go, yeah, I think so. And he goes, all right, have a nice day. And then he left. Yeah. I was like. My wind, my front windshield was right in front of this guy's vision, ten and thirty five percent. My windows are pitch black. I the car's don't... obnoxious as hell. I'm supposed to be in quarantine, and I'm laying under my car in this parking lot. Same like move, he had man. every reason to bother me, and he's just like, "All right, whatever, take it easy." 
Yeah, I've been riding around with two boxes of macaroni on the passenger seat just in case I get pulled over. Because I can be like, just take this to my little old grandma, sir. Oh, <laughs> my pregnant wife. She yeah. wanted macaroni. Yeah. <clears throat> Yo, Wooly, you have been taking this quarantine thing hella serious. Listen, he called yeah. me a couple days ago. Hey, um... I'm I'm going to ride the bike and I'll you know it's a straight it's a straight path it's one way should I be should I be worried about getting the coronavirus? It's a daily <laughs> yeah. conversation with me and him. Yeah, well, you guys got to understand though. I went from absolutely zero f's given to like major f's given <laughs> like overnight. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I think because you know I work from home on the regular, so I, I'm. I think what's happening to me is the more that you stay at home, like the freakier it is to go out, you know, like Mike's been out and he's like, dude, it's not that bad. Just, you know, like go out. If you got to go out, just be smart. And I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm. like I'll, I'll look at the mailbox and be like, dang, I probably really want what's in there, but I ain't touching it. <laughs> <laughs> I've turned into an absolute psycho about it. Just being honest. Hopefully I'll go back to normal and I won't turn into like a permanent Jesse. <laughs> I mean, if you turn into a permanent me, you don't worry about it as much. You're just conscious about it. Okay. Okay. For those who, this might be your first podcast, kind of little blow over. Jesse's a germaphobe, just to put it short. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> he says that with like hand sanitizer in his hand. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment all my life. <laughs> I've Jesse's on top of this game. <laughs> I've been prepared, man. That's funny. What's your apartment like? Man, that's what's got me curious. What do, what's it like? What do you mean? I mean, so it's like uh, everything's clean here because I make sure I'm clean before I get in here. Once I'm here, it's like balls to the wall everywhere. Like, I, I don't care. But <laughs> I don't <laughs> as long as I keep works. it out. I mean, in the Jeep, I've got my I've got my Germex, I've got my wipes, so I clean up everything before I even you know leave the Jeep. So okay, so do you worry about driving with the top down? Okay, here's and I'm not like a professional or a physician or a scientist or anything, but my no. thought process is what this virus isn't as dense as air molecules, so it's not going to float, so it has to be projected onto you. And it has a drop-off period, or it has a drop-off distance, or whatever. So that's what that six feet is meant to to do. You know, if somebody's coughing in your like in your area, and they're within six feet, yeah, you've got something to worry about because now you've got you know what could be droplets of this virus on your person, and if you're not conscious on where your hands are going, you could somehow ingest it. And it's not about you know it physically being on you. It's we touch our face, we touch our hands, like we touch it, like all the time like it, it's disgusting that's how you get it like you have to physically ingest it like you are why the virus gets to you is because you have it on your hands or you have it on your person and somehow you put your hands on your face or you know you're grabbing for your straw or for your cup and you touch the straw and now your lips go on the straw and now you've got it but yeah i read somebody had said something like that they were like listen this virus doesn't spread humans spread it <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. big difference. yeah so i don't worry like uh, woolly called me the other day and while he was calling me the top was down on the jeep every window was open i'm not worried about it like you know three car lengths in front of me a guy sneezing out the window and it coming all the way over here to to inside my jeep and on me um, yeah, but you know what? That, put that thing in a wind tunnel and see what happens, dude. And, you know what? And I totally believe you. But that's my responsibility to make sure I'm not touching my face. I oh, every time I park the Jeep, I'm telling you, I've got the wipes in there. I act like I know for a fact that I have it on me, so I clean my body. So even if it did get on me, I stop it from going any further. It's my responsibility. It's not you know. You can do whatever you want to to try to keep away from it, but. If you're not conscious about it all the time, there it's it's gonna get to you with the statistics Jesse's, out right now. Jesse's sure. stripping, Jesse stripping butt ass naked with some like baby wife, <laughs> like wiping down. It's not saying, clean enough yet. That lemon Clorox. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so, so I gotta pay, ask. Yeah. So, so how how often are you guys leaving the house right now? 
to actually go out and do whatever. The only okay, I got... place... Sorry, go ahead, Hunter. <clears throat> I, I, I have to be a little ashamed of myself. I go out probably a lot more than I should, mostly for the sake of just driving my car. But I also am part-time caretaker of my grandmother, and I got to go over to my grandmother's house. So I find myself out a lot, and sometimes I'm driving, and I'm like, God, man, I'm a piece of shit. I should not be out right now. But, but it's like the more yeah. you're, the more you're out, the the more comfortable you get, right? Like, yeah. See, if you don't go out much, then when you do, you feel like you're driving like post-apocalypse, like everything's super weird or whatever. Yeah. Um, I One thing that going... I've noticed. Go ahead. Go ahead. I hadn't been going anywhere but the bike park and back, which I guess yeah. is not essential, but it's essential for my spiritual and mental well-being i gotta freaking ride a bike or i turn into a jerk and my wife's like you need to go ride a bike i don't care if you get corona <laughs> you're being a jerk yeah. like, right, i don't fair. think you have to worry about like if you're just going for a drive you're not going out and touching stuff yeah. that's infected like if you're just going for a drive with the windows open i mean obviously like if the guy next to you is is at the stoplight with the windows open make it eye contact as he's coughing aggressively yeah, that's a problem. But like most of the time, that's not going to be the case. So if you're just going out yeah. for a drive, I don't think it's a problem. But if, if you're yeah. a germaphobe or claustrophobic, don't go to Home Depot or Lowe's. Oh, they hell. are the most packed out places in the <laughs> world right now. Why? Why? They, you those? think they're damn concert venues because everybody's got time <laughs> off and they want to fix their freaking houses. Yeah. 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 yeah I've, I've been in Lowe's a couple of times. One of the projects we did was replace the steps of my front porch. And I, Lowe's, uh, one thing that I've noticed having been out, I guess, more than I probably should be out, is people are doing, a, from what I've noticed, a pretty decent job at, at, you know, if they are out, they're conscious. So most of the store, not that I've been in a lot of stores, but most of the stores that so I've been in. Um, yeah, okay, fair. Um, they're taking, like, all all the gas stations I've been in, they've all put up, like, you know, sneeze guards and they have, you know, they're pretty strict about, they've got like tape on the floor that's like six feet apart and they make people stand, you know, that far apart. My local Walmart, um, they've got like a little clicker and they only let like 20 people in at a time. And each person that comes in, they have somebody at the door who sanitizes the entire buggy and then hands you a buggy and lets you go and shop. And then when one person comes out, they let another person in. So people are, you know, at least somewhat being um more conscious but of course it is better if you can um to stay inside but god it is so difficult so hard i mean so i'm going to Publix probably once a week maybe a little bit longer without mm -hmm. going there i just went today they've got like in every aisle they have a direction like you enter oh, yeah. in from this side of the aisle yeah. exit from this yeah. so it's this big like racing circuit track um, and they have them out there sanitizing the cards before you pick one up. And I guess where you where you swipe your card, where you would normally be as close as you can to the cashier, they've got like a plexiglass screen there now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what I call the sneeze guard. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say that one more time, Hunter. Say that again, please. <laughs> I said that's what I call the sneeze guard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, and and another note, and it's I haven't been to Taco Bell since I moved up here, so I went to Taco Bell and got a single taco, and they were super, super clean. It's drive through. They they I saw them take off the gloves beforehand and then put new gloves on to to deal with my card and and touch my shit. So uh, see. yeah, I hadn't done any of that. We've gotten takeout a couple times, um, but I've gone home and stuck it in the oven on broil or something and just baked it, figuring that would do something. I don't know if it does or not. But no, man, like I was working on that F-150 the other day and ran into a roadblock. I need a part. And normally, I would have just ran to the parts store and got the tool. I didn't need a part. I needed a tool. Um, but instead, I was like, nope. <laughs> Went on Amazon. It was going to take like three weeks. I'm like... Freaking serious, but I'll wait. I'm noticing I, I all of the delivery times right now are pushed back on Amazon. Like, this is the time that yeah. I want to buy all these parts. Right. This is the time that I want to, like, put myself to work. But oh, if I order anything. take your money, but you're not going to get it for a month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, I, I ordered. 
What's that? <laughs> Again, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, honey. Oh, I was just going to say I ordered fog light, LED fog lights for the Focus a month ago, and they still have not showed up. Oh, okay. So not on Amazon. I ordered drop beams for the F1. This is a 1990 F-150 for you guys that don't know about it yet. And I, I've just been messing with it. I kind of acquired it for a dollar, long story short. But um, I ordered some drop beams from DJM, makes drop beams, and they had them things here in a week, less than a week. So, you know, I called them. I was like, how you guys doing? I don't know them or anything, but they're like, I mean, we're here. You know, we're kind of alternating staff, and, and but we're trying to sh- we're trying to ship out whatever the heck we can. You know, he's like, people are bored, people are ordering, so. Yep. Yeah, I've noticed the smaller companies are definitely better about getting um, getting product out mm-hmm. at a reasonable time. Yeah. Dude, Jan- Danny, I got to throw some love to TV Performance, our boy Danny Check. Dude, he is getting, dude, Danny. I have seen him throwing <laughs> parts out left and right. He is yeah. killing it right now. Well, yeah, Good but if you, know, if you know Danny, his dream would be where nobody would bother him. And he yeah, he loves this. <laughs> Quarantine <laughs> is the blessing of his life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna send this to Danny. He's gonna love this. Dude, I he talked texted to me the other day. He texted me the other day because I guess he had watched Tiger King. Right? Everybody's seen oh, that. If you God. haven't, go watch it. It's oh. you know, it's a crap oh. show. The Tiger King I know is Steve Irwin himself. You guys watch like, um, the first three episodes and then turn it off because after that it gets it's it's just sad. Dan- <laughs> Danny messaged me. He's like, can me? He's like, I need a new ad for for the magazine a new tv performance ads he was like why don't me and you be the chassis kings and i was like are you serious he's like i'm texting guy right now guys are crap he's like yeah. I, he's like i want you to be joe exotic and i want to be the tiger and i was like you gotta be kidding me <laughs> oh my God. yeah if y'all don't know danny from tv performance he's like totally 90s punk rock southern california kid man like he's so cool but like he's like the most non-california california guy i've ever met in my life he hates living in california but he's like my family's here i can't leave (laughs) he he loves california he just hates like you know the rules yeah Yeah. he's a a um, funny guy Oh yeah, I was talking to Scott from Grip Oil too. I've just been calling people to shoot the poo, man, because you know I'm 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 bored. And uh, yeah, Scott's the same way. Scott's like, shoot, man, we're working. You know, he's like, I've got product, thank God, and I will send it to anybody that buys something. We got nothing to do here but do custom wheels. So yeah, yeah man. I don't they're know. Be, they're building a, a team drift car. They're doing what? They're building a team, like a Grip Royal team drift car that they're all going to compete in, I guess. It's like it's a Teal S13. That's pretty cool. A drag across the country and break. Yes. Probably. (laughs) That's what they'll be doing, man. That's how how we tried to do it. (laughs) Yep. Yep. No, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Is it the same 240 he's always had? No, it's like a, a hatch. Oh, okay. I guess they're all sharing it or something. I, I don't know what the story is on <laughs> sorry s13 hatch That's am cool. i breaking up again <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, man, you God. God. i'm sorry guys my internet's terrible i was gonna go inside my house to film this but it looks like a dungeon in there so yeah, here we are you guys ever been to like a, a middle school or a high school like a band a little concert they put on and somebody has yeah. a solo and you just totally botch it. That's what it's like every time you glitch. <laughs> that is it's like because we all have to sit there and wait. Just like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Stop. Stop. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Right. We need oh. we need like some sort of like addressing that you guys can address on <laughs> camera <laughs> to make that less awkward. Just talk about the sign that says stop. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work. Oh, um, all right. So what else is on the, you know, I've, I've got a off the cuff question. Um, so I noticed a lot, <laughs> I noticed, um, a lot of manufacturers are talking about the prices of their vehicles going down right now because of where everything is. Are there any cars that you're looking at 
that you would that you would buy if you saw that price go down that are kind of modern new you know maybe the last three or four years that's i've tried up. man a little bit on the last podcast um new tundra or type r man that's pretty much it for me yeah i've come to the conclusion that nobody's making anything with balls anymore so i'm out <laughs> I'm, gonna yeah. keep, I'm gonna keep my fiesta um for me it's kind of tough uh sti i guess is the easy answer because it's still a pretty decent car regardless of what you think of the boxer um true story however, but they're gonna redo it next year aren't they so i thought about that one but i want to hold off are they gonna make it look like not a camry ever again yes <laughs> that would be great at least the, 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 yeah i mean probably not somebody sketched a really cool one and they passed it around the internet and then they'll probably be like nah psych it's gonna be I, that's a Corolla Camry. I do want to throw. I do want to throw a kind of odd one out there. Um, a buddy of mine <clears throat> just purchased a new Veloster N, and surprisingly, it's a pretty badass car. I'm not gonna lie. You're gonna think I'm stupid, but trust uh, me, it's quick, man. It's I, quick. You got to applaud them for doing the dang thing. I, the That's only true, thing I yeah. can't get past the fact that it's not symmetrical. Can't do it. Make it a four-door or make it a two-door. But you can't do both. Yeah. For I those who don't know, because I just learned it myself, the, the do... Velosters are three-door cars. So, two, you know, two-door like a coupe. But the rear passenger side has a third door. So did if you, you look not, at it. Did you not know this, Jesse? I didn't know this, no. If you if you look at it, if you look at the side of a Veloster, especially the new ones, it's really obvious the what the B pillars are not symmetrical. They're they all match. So your passenger side door is not as long as your driver's side door, which to me what? totally scrambles my brain if you're thinking about putting a roll cage in it or even rolling down the windows because I feel like you'd have baffle. I I can't. I can't. Wait, wait. So is there a third suicide door in the back or is it just yeah. one big long ass door? No, okay. The driver's side is Somebody. a big, long-ass door, and okay. the passenger's the passenger side is, is basically too small. two half doors. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of yeah, funky. It's, it's really right. weird. If you look at it in person, if you're not paying attention to it, you don't notice. But if you're, you know, your average car guy and you're really looking at that car, you go, those B-pillars are very obviously not aligned, and I can't handle that. But if you can overlook that, the car is quick, and the suspension, it's kind of similar to the Focus RS. Type R engine where you, you know, it's got the Magna ride or whatever that you can adjust. I mean, it's a pretty, it's a bitching car. So, you know, as much as Hi Hyundai or whatever seems weird, don't overlook it. It's a competitive. Dude, I, I, so, my Hyundai, Hyundai's are, are nice. I mean, I get to drive a lot of the newer cars and especially with the new generation that's flipping over right now, whether it's the Veloster or the Forte or whatever, dude, they are top notch like really nice cars I, I drove the little launch edition forte and yeah. it's really a nice little car man it's not like i had a burning desire to go buy one but i would 100 percent recommend you know like like uh, up against the civic or whatever like they're really they're really doing it and and for a while my criticism was they were just making cars that were um kind of copycats of other cars. And I guess, I mean, really, you could argue that with anybody these days, but I feel like they've kind of found their own thing now. You know what I mean? Like, they're not just trying to make their version of a Corolla. They're making a, a Forte or whatever. I can appreciate that, because so. uh, how many other manufacturers are doing that? <clears throat> well, you know, they're figuring out. I guess they're <clears throat> where the Japanese brands were probably in the 80s, you know? Um, so they kind of got their role now. But I need a two-door or a four-door. Uh, before we move to the next one, my only concern with that is the balance between having one side have two door and one side have one door. Now, if they figure that out, if they were able to do that and still have you know, balance out the entire I mean, car, they're racing that's them in IMSA and they're competitive. They're doing really well, and that's another thing. Like, go Honda. They've got a race team together. They're doing it, you know. Um, that's what's and up. they're going up against the Type Rs and uh, and and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, I mean, go drive one. If you, you can do the weird Korean not symmetrical thing, go for it, man. Like, yeah. I respect that. I respect yeah. that. Yeah, man. All right, next topic. All right. 
Let's go ahead and shift to the big boy. This one holds a lot of weight. So basically, because you know you can't race right now, NASCAR has decided to do something pretty cool where they've got all of their drivers and Travis Pastrana for some reason on iRacing, um, and they're doing they're you know broadcasting it on television and basically doing simulated NASCAR races. So, which is really cool. Explain iRacing for the people and me. iRacing is ba- <laughs> is basically a in lame like. Bottom line, it's like an online racing game. Internet can, racing. Internet racing. Dudes have like simulators and they, they have drive. Really expensive simulators at their houses. And they're yeah. literally just racing from quarantine, but they're basically racing the, the exact same thing. So, like, I think two weeks ago, they were supposed to be racing in Bristol. And they did race in Bristol, but it was just from the comfort of their homes <laughs> on an internet yeah. connection. Yeah. So, um, and, and so to be fair, it, as lame as that sounds, trust me, I get it. But at least they're doing something. Every other sport has kind of flopped just cut and just out. given up. Yeah. I think that NASCAR and I think maybe IndyCar are the only ones that are actually doing anything somewhat successfully. That being said, NASCARs can't seem to get out of their own dang way when it comes to getting out of uh, getting out of these races clean here. They're getting in a lot of trouble constantly. <laughs> Sad so, it, it, it's it's cool because like mm. a lot of the drivers, I don't know of, of all of them, but a lot of them, that you know, they're mic'd and on television as they're racing, you can hear them talking, talking to each other. You know, so a lot of them even have their pit crew. You know, you can virtually simulate, like, view the race, watching them drive, and it's you know basically a simulated NASCAR race. However, with that comes a, a new sort of pressure. And has caused um, a little concern, um, one of which, the first one being early last week, uh, they were racing in Bristol. I think it was Bristol. Um, mm. Bubba Wallace got a little love tap. Um, for, I can't remember who, who tapped him. I don't know if he got spun out or what, but got a little love tap. And basically, you can hear him in the recording go, all right, guys, that's it. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just he rage just, quit. He just did. <laughs> He oh just my did. god! Dude, I love furious. it. Furious. I really loves it because I feel like that's something we would do. All right, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> this is this stupid. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wait, I, I would... Go ahead. Uh, so yeah, it's hard. I think for him, for people who have been racing, who have been in the seats, who feel it, like it's it's not the same. So it might be difficult for them to take it serious, but. Everyone else who's at home watching this, like they still take it serious. Certainly, the sponsors take it serious because after that, uh, Blue em- Emu, I think it was his yeah. sponsor, dropped him. Dropped him. Come on. Publicly, yeah. They publicly yeah. fired him to Twitter Re-tweeted. for throwing his video game controller on the ground. Basically, yeah. Who here has not thrown their video game controller uh-huh. on the ground and said, F this, I'm out? Well, and, yeah, and the most but... frustrating thing for, for Bubba, in his defense, I know he's he's caught a lot of flack for this whole situation, but if they would have actually been on a real racetrack, he actually got wrecked twice, like within a, a, the same quarter of a lap. If that would have happened really on the racetrack, that car probably would have been on the trailer and he would have been in the pits just drinking beer for the rest of it because it would have been over. That's true. You know? So, so true. how mad can they really get, you know? Yeah. All right, Bubba's got yeah. my full support. <laughs> it's crazy and then it started a whole bunch of flack on twitter because he tweeted he was like it's a damn game yeah. <laughs> thank you <laughs> and then another guy commented and are they look are they looking at these standings are they taking these standings okay. seriously like how is that i i from what i can gather they're taking it relatively serious um lame i was about to say this this has the potential to be epically awesome if nobody takes it seriously if nobody takes it seriously i'm in i will watch this <laughs> i will watch them play video games okay hold on you're gonna joke love this around. One then. you're gonna love this one then willie so um i don't know if, if it was earlier today yesterday i don't know exactly at what point this is happening but they're you know they're racing again and oh, Ke- oh. kevin lar kevin larson no no not kevin kyle kyle larson, kyle larson. having yeah, Kyle Larson is having issues, okay, with his connection. Sort of like me, I feel him. Um, 
<laughs> but he he's having she's having some issues, right? And he doesn't think that his um his team can hear him. <laughs> and so he decided to test the audio by going, "Hey, in." As in the the, the N word, bomb. yeah, yeah. We said hard, hard R. R. It was a hard, hard R. R. Did they say hard R? <laughs> and <laughs> and everybody else, all the other drivers, going, uh, "You're talking to everyone here, bud." <laughs> and and we can hear you, bud. Just a loud and clear. silent across the line. <laughs> yeah, and, we heard, and bud. then he goes. Well, he's unemployed and then, now. And then he goes. The only thing he says is. Yikes. <laughs> That's accurate. Idiot. I'm literally crying. On oh, that. Any word. Any other word. Oh, I'm, sure, you... I'm sure that's something he's told himself too over the last. <laughs> oh, really? Any other word. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. And then, what, what, and then what's funny is just in case like his connection was messed up, you can hear one of the drivers. Um, that one of the drivers ad- addressing everybody else go, just don't say anything. Just don't say anything. <laughs> so he came back and was like, what? What happened? <laughs> like, I was Sorry, like, guys. I glitched out there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so since oh, then, that's unfortunate. Um, you know, um, NBC Sports has since suspended him. I don't know if it's indefinitely or temporarily. He has made a public apology. You can find that on YouTube. But if you haven't seen it, regardless if you're mad at him, offended, whatever, just for the sake of it being what it is, I suggest you go look the clip up on YouTube because it's just so stupid funny. Like, why? I don't understand. So there's a a clip of, like, it happening? Oh, yeah. It happening from multiple drivers' perspectives. Like, he's basically going, can you hear me? Can you hear me? And then he goes, <laughs> hey, in. And you're just like, what? Kyle did lose his top two sponsors, so it's costing him a ton of money because he lost McDonald's and Reddit One or something like that. McDonald's. Oh, I bet Wait, that was does a that good mean some oh, That was a ton stayed. of money. Does that mean yeah. some of his sponsors stayed? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. really, have, really have no option at that. So point. some sponsors like might have heard that and were like, eh, "Let's see, let's see where this goes." So bad. Maybe we can get on the hood now. Oh my I don't... gosh! Oh my god! <laughs> I, I, okay, so if you were a sponsor in this predicament, what would? How would you feel? What would you like? How would you react? Wait, Done. like cut them that... off. No, that predicament or or like overall with like, wait, 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 we're all going iRacing now? No, not the iRacing. <laughs> Forget the iRacing thing. Like as far as your driver, regardless of the situation in public, because this was on national television from yeah, my you understanding. Gotta cut him. You got to. You, you got to cut them. Yeah. yeah. However, Bubba's situation, I think I would give him more money and tell him to be dumber next time. <laughs> That's the thing, I mean, it did bring a lot yeah. of attention to Bubba Wallace. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, but I have to go back to what I said. If they don't take this quite so seriously, this could be absolutely amazing to watch. Oh, it could be a fun little e series to watch because like feel- there's there's funny stuff happening. Like like Jimmy Johnson is an amazing NASCAR driver, but he sucks at the video game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, that's funny. Yes. <laughs> I want to just see him say "screw it" and turn around and start trying to like head on hit the you. opposite way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It could be first, Bill. What are you doing? It could be funny if they kind of take it like just a little bit seriously. But if it's more of an entertainment thing than an actual sporting event, I have a feeling that NASCAR is like, "Oh my gosh, how do we save this and save the contracts and save all of that?" And this is what they've kind of come up with. Which kind of takes the fun out of it, but I mean, I, I kind of want to watch why. it now. <laughs> well, I can like... see why. I mean, it's I think it's totally fine now more than ever. More people are going to tune in from home, so why not have the the i series? You still get your name out there. You still uh, I don't know if people are paying to watch this or networks are still getting right. revenue from advertisers. It makes sense to go. Yeah, where to... are we watching this? Yeah, I don't in, I NBC it. Sports. NBC Sports, Twitch. I think there's a couple of different platforms that you can find it on. To be honest, as, as a businessman, I think more than anything, this is a way of fulfilling contracts to make sure you keep money moving. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea. 
And it's funny, man. There, there, there's never going to be another situation where you find these guys doing this, and you can definitely tell that they, they're enjoying it. Like you listen to the clips, although they're taking it serious. Like one of them might like twitch or something and like bump the other car, and you just hear him go, "You just, like, damn it, Bubba!" <laughs> so I would much rather hear that banter than than the rage crew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I mean. It's, I mean, at the start of this little thing of you talking about it, I had zero interest, and now I, I feel like I got to watch this. this like the <laughs> you, see? <laughs> you see, <laughs> best thing. Well, going. and you know that something hilarious is going to happen. It's probably going to happen. You so get far, like yeah. NASCAR drivers together or something like that. Yeah, it's going to be good. All yeah. right. Well, I think we're all pretty intrigued in this whole iRacing NASCAR thing. So I know I'm probably going to watch more of it. Not not even for NASCAR, but just for the sake of I, you I know how like, oddly entertaining it is. I feel like it's going to stick around. And maybe. I mean, I, I wouldn't know. doubt it. I feel like there's going to be an um, I NASCAR and a NASCAR, like a separate series. Yeah. yeah. Regular NASCAR. When that hypes back up, I'm not going to tag <laughs> along. I'll stick with the I NASCAR. Go Problem is, I NASCAR is going to get taken over by nine year olds. Yeah, <laughs> are just uh, video game geniuses, and they're going to do a, a lot car, better. But they're, they're going to do a lot better than these actual NASCAR drivers yeah, are doing right killed now. Killed your lap time, Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> Suck yeah, it, Bubba. Well, <laughs> 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 but yeah, we will we will keep you guys updated next week on more uh, i racing mishaps because I'm sure somebody else is going to do something dumb when you have a bunch of 40 year old dudes trying to figure out how to drive a NASCAR on the internet. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I like this whole news platform. What do you, you guys like it? Like kind of touching on current events. You guys a fan yeah. of it? Yeah. I mean, yeah let I us like know what you guys up. think in the uh-huh. comments. Um, if you like the whole current event thing, send us current events. If you see articles that you dig, uh, send it to us. We'll look over it, probably talk about it, because, you know, what else? What else yeah, like, do do? I don't think it has to be, like, mainstream articles at all. Like, you could send me just any sort of funny little local, regional type of stuff, and it'd be, it'd be fun to kind of, like, go over it and try and learn about all these crazy things that are happening right now because we're all stuck in cages. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways... Per last week, you know, as usual, you know where to find us at S3 Magazine on everything, except for Twitter. That's just at S3 Mag. Um, but YouTube, S3 Magazine, we don't have a lot on YouTube right now because we can't do a lot, but there will be more stuff coming. So check us out there. And of course, we are a print magazine, you know, per S3 Magazine. Um, we've got the next issue coming out in the next week to two weeks. There's the most recent one. So you can be expecting that soon at www.s3mag.com. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, uh, fire engines up to sit on that couch and watch some racing. We will see you next week. Bye.